Today we're going to be sharing with you some intuitive art. Once a month we offer a printable for our channel membership group and we'll drop the link for that below. And in the past, Seth has been doing some digital watercolor, but I had a request for some of my canvas art. I showed a little bit of that last week when I painted some items for a video that I was doing with Debbie, which is coming out, I think the end of this week or next. We're gonna give you a brief rundown of what it takes to get started and kind of our thought process. Neither one of us are classically trained in fine art. Sure, sure we're not. Zeb actually took art classes in high school. Digital media mostly. I took zero art classes ever in my entire life, so I don't consider myself a fine artist, but sometimes I feel like that makes my art less inhibited and I just kind of paint the way that I want. I'm always looking for good balance, good composition, and areas of break so that way it's not so busy the eye has no rest. You can base your piece however you want. A lot of people do like a fun backdrop of a bunch of different colors and then they add layers on top of that. We are starting out with white swan, kind of in lieu of like, is it gesso or gesso? Gesso. Gesso. So in lieu of gesso, just to prime. <laughs> it's running away on me. <laughs> to prime and prep our boards. Once that's dry, we'll go ahead and get started. What are you gonna be painting? So I always love fields and barns together. That's. I, I need a field and a barn in my life, so that's I'm probably going to do something of that nature. And I'm going to be doing some floral. It's springtime. It's really kind of what I'm into, so that's what I'm going to be doing on mine. So we'll get these dry and we'll get started painting. I got told I have to have my uh, my own set of brushes she can't share. So we're opening a, a new pack. <laughs> I, I get a little crazy when I do intuitive art. I just kind of flow with it and I don't do a lot of stop and start. So you kind of have to look and see where I'm dipping my brush to figure out what colors I'm using. If you have questions when I'm all finished, I can break it down for you. But we've got Bohemian Blue, Hey Sailor, Cake Batter, Queen Bee, Queen Bee French, uh, Millinery. French Millinery, Gypsy Green. Is this Gypsy Green? Gypsy yes. Green, Gypsy Green Skeleton, Skeleton Key, key. Marquee. Yep. Um, and this is Cowgirl Coral. This is cowgirl coral mixed with petticoat pink, kissing booth and petticoat pink. That's what I'm using to start off with. If I need another color, we'll grab it in between. But to get started, I'm gonna do the background. So last picture I did, I did a solid white background. This time I'm gonna add a little bit more depth in that. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna start off with kind of a gray background. So I'm gonna use skeleton key. What are you gonna do in your background? So I think I'm gonna use this mister and just really lightly do my sky. And then I'll do the ground up to the sky. And I'm gonna go in varying shades that way. Look at you, so fancy. And I'm like, and I'm going to take this brush, which is called the Assistant. And I'm just gonna slap some paint on here. The Assistant is also going to be my go-to. Hey, you're doing the same color for the sky as I am. Well, sorry, we'll see if it looks I'm gonna lighten mine up quite a bit with the mister. And these misters, I'll have the link down below for you. And they, they work really good. You just like one pull, and it just mists out. You don't have to continually pump it. And the thing about starting off with a DIY white swan is that when I get it wet, it will reactivate and then this will blend with the base paint that's on there, which is kind of a nice touch. It's hard to say how much I'm gonna go. I might do some fluffy white clouds in here. Who knows? Jamie will be done long before I am. If you wanna see the finished product of mine, You'll probably have to catch like another video or watch in the Friday vlog for it because I'm not going to finish today. Oh, I did not have this lid on correctly. It's like a layer of clay right here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> hey, you've got texture on your painting Yeah, I now. know. I, that's the thing about intuitive artists. I'm not a perfectionist, so. Perfection not required. All right, time to spray and get this paint moving with the background on mine. Oh, you splattered over on mine. Careful with that. When you're in the splatter zone, <laughs> you're at risk of splatter situation happening. It's all right, it'll I all get more covered up. Right, I think. I have a hard time because I always want to cross my legs when I paint. Probably you should have an easel, but I'm not fancy like that, so. There we go. That whole thing of white's going to be contaminated, just in case you were wondering. It's almost gone, it'll be all right. I have a plate here, but that's only if I want to mix colors. You're going to contaminate all those colors? 
but I, you know, I might. Painting with Jamie. Sometimes you gotta kind of move your brush around to give it whatever kind of movement you want it to feel like. Look at a dark moody sky. I need to add more white, maybe even some yellow up in here. I don't even know if mine's a sky. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. You don't know where you're at yet? Nope. Okay, Gypsy Green's gonna be on on here. <laughs> if you hold your canvas up after you've misted it, it'll kind of give you some drippies if that's the color, you know, the look you're going for. I like a little drippy situation on my stuff, mostly because I feel like it makes you look artistic even though maybe I'm not. So it gives you some movement in your paint. I like mine to be a little bit translucent in the back. I don't like it to be solid, which is why I'm using water and smearing my paint so it's a little bit see-through. Okay, and then I'm gonna hold this down and I'm just gonna let a few drips occur. I don't worry so much about perspective, which is kind of a nuance to art. If you want to really worry about perspective, one of the things to keep in mind is that things that are closer are gonna be larger and things that are further away are going to be smaller. You also kind of want to think like, where is the sunshine coming from? Is it coming from which angle? But th that doesn't matter till shading. And honestly, I don't ever worry about that. <laughs> we'll see how it all ends up. I just look at it and I'm like, oh, okay, I need to do this. So I want to change my color a little bit for my greenery. So I'm going to mix together a little bit of Hey Sailor with my Gypsy Green. Because if I have the same color, it's not really going to stand out. Let's see, this is an angled brush. I like to use angled brush. And I actually don't like it to be mixed all the way. Because little swirl action. Little swirl action, yeah. So I'm gonna go, let's see. I'm gonna start off with. So all I'm doing here is just laying out the groundwork for some of my first flowers. And I like to do a little off center, so these flowers are gonna come a little more this direction than over here. So I'll leave a blank space over here to add something a little bit. So I'm gonna come through and randomly add some leaves. And then I will come back through with a lighter mixture to add some depth. And don't be afraid to add blues and greens and browns to your mixture for your leaves because in nature, nothing is all one solid color. So I'm mixing cake batter on mine with layered chocolate. And I'm gonna bring some shadows back in to my field a little bit here. Jamie's is gonna be the printable for this month, so we'll watch hers. Well, I mean, if yours is better, we could. Oh, mine's not gonna be done. We'll see when it gets finished. <laughs> I'm just painting for fun because you are. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, having a partner always makes it better. It's like a painting class. Yeah. So I'm just adding in some varying colors with my lighter green mixture here, and I'm totally random with it. So if that bothers you, I'm, I, apologize. <laughs> I apologize in advance. most of my leaves done here. I will probably come back once I'm done doing flowers and I will add some more like greenery to it, but you just never know. I like to never underestimate the end, the other side of your brush. Sometimes I like to add dots and I'll flip over my brush and just use that side. I don't know if you do that in your artwork. It's very in mine? precise. Uh, I don't usually need dots. <laughs> I feel like everything needs dots. I don't know. I'm gonna try out the mascot here. I've got, this is the cowgirl coral mixed with a petticoat pink. And I'm just gonna fan some flowers on there. Now I'm not worried about full coverage because I'm gonna come back with multiple colors to really give my flowers some depth. Thank you. 
This is Petticoat Pink, and I'm just kind of fanning that in here. What I like to do is I, I come back with this darker color and then I will come over it with that fanning brush. And then blend that color in. I'm gonna start using your brushes here in a minute. And you're like, hey, <laughs> don't you touch my brushes. I've only used one brush so far, no oh, contamination. Wow. It's because you're still in the background. It's all coming together here pretty quick. Okay, I'm gonna add some Queen Bee. Start adding some yellow flowers in here. I'm just doing a little swishy motion, like a little sna S snake going back and forth. I'm really loving this look. I want to soften it a little bit. So I'm just going to spray it with a mister. And these colors will be much more vibrant when I seal it. You can see when I spray it how dark they get. Because of the clay paint, it does dry much lighter than it actually is. So just spraying it just to get a little bit of movement on there. And then I, I like to come in once I'm all done and add some more. Shadows and depth. This is just going to blend the colors just a little bit. Once you like where they've kind of blended and dripped to, and you're going to want to lay your artwork flat once you get the drip and movement that you want. I am done. I like the way this looks. I'm going to let this dry. If I feel like I need to add something later, I will, but I'm really pleased with this. I had to run go get Jack, so I got my sky and my grass background done and the outline for my barn. Even if you hadn't, do you think you would have gotten it finished? No, nope, because I do way more detail. I like yours though. Yours turned out really cool. Mine's impressionistic. I can't do detail, so I don't even try. I'm actually thinking this is going to make a really great Mother's Day present. So uh, Zep's going to frame this out for me. We'll include some pictures of it framed at the end of this video, so definitely don't miss that. If you want to get these paints and paint brushes, you can go to jamierayvintage.com. I use the magic pack of brushes, as did Zeb, and then we have a myriad of colors that Zeb will list in the link below. Let us know in the comments below something that maybe you'd like to see us paint in the future and maybe we'll add in some canvas art, stretch ourselves a little bit. Not saying we're professionals, we'll just show you what we come up with. Make sure you're sharing the video, help support the channel. Also, if you wanna get this print, don't forget to sign up for our channel membership. It's $5 a month and then you can print off 100 of these if you want. Every month there's a new print, there's a new book chapter, and a whole bunch of other things that you get with your channel membership. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Hit the subscribe button.